just not interested. Of all the nerve. Oh, uh, uh, madam, who was that? Uh, it was uh, Leonard Nimoy. Oh. He wants to go in search of my virtue. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, oh. I'll get it. All right, I wonder who that is. I don't know. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, hello, Mr. Honest. Do come in. My goodness, what are you doing here? I'm here to see the woman who overworks and underpays you. Well, what's up, Mr. H? Uh, madam, uh, as a result of my frequent appearances on your show, I've been receiving a number of love poems from a woman who signs her letters lustfully, your number one fan. Ooh, are the letters dirty? Oh, 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 oh. Actually, they're quite lovely. Madam, I'll get right to the point. Women hate me. I'm too honest for them. This sucker seems to like me, so I automatically like her. Since I'm always honest, I'd describe myself as desperate. Welcome to the real world, honey. Desperation rides again. Well, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me come on your show and, and ask whoever's writing these poems to call me. Well, why should I? You almost blew it for me with the IRS yesterday, honest. Why should I do you a favor? Because you're a wonderful, feeling person with a heart of gold. Oh, you should be called Mr. Bull. Come on, <laughs> One time couldn't hurt. Gosh, haven't heard that line since prom night. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. And now, may I be honest with you? Certainly. You have something on your front tooth, and it's very unattractive. <laughs> oh, it's a morsel of Salisbury steak from my single man's TV dinner that I ate last night. <laughs> when you're a single man, one meal is more pathetic than the next. Now you're being too damn honest. Here. As usual, you're too damn honest. Here, take that and get that out of your tooth. What's the matter with you? I've never seen you so nervous. Uh, nervous? Uh, nervous? Oh, no, I'm not nervous. <laughs> ah! Oh, me. I'll get it. Oh, uh, hello, Madam's residence. Uh, oh, yes, uh, just a moment. Uh, Madam, it's the vice president of Paramount. I do not talk to vice presidents. Oh. No. Uh, besides, <laughs> he looks like a baboon. Oh, baboon. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, but Madam does not talk to baboons. Oh! Bernadette, please. Stars, I don't know what got into me. It's one thing to be an absent-minded secretary, but I think you've been using the whiteout on your brain. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hi, dear. Yes, welcome to Madam's Place. Oh, I'm so glad to have you here with me. Thank you, boys. You know, I'm so excited tonight. I've got a great guest lineup. Uh, you know, when a funny person is born, I, I think it's a miracle. And if my opinion is true, a miracle happened when my next guest came into the world. 
Yes, she is one of the funniest people ever slapped on the rump by an obstetrician. She's in demand everywhere. In the theater, she's appeared in Broadway shows like Annie, The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window, House of Blue Leaves, movies she's been in, The Graduate, Kill a Mockingbird, Grease. I mean, you cannot name all of it. You might even remember her as Esmeralda in A Bewitched. And, oh, a scads of others. I'm honored to have her here tonight. A good friend of mine. Please welcome Miss Alice Ghostly. Yay, Alice! I'm so glad I didn't trip. I'm so glad you're here at Madam's place, Alice. Well, thank you, Madam. Uh, I must admit, I'm absolutely flabbergasted by that introduction. Well, what do you mean? Uh, you mean you were surprised that I was the one doing the complimenting? Yes. But why? We've always been close. Have we always tried to help each other? And we've always had the highest regard for each other's talents. No, we haven't. Of course we have. Remember the little Annie incident of a couple of years ago? Annie incident? Uh, well, no, I don't. I, I'm, I'm... No, you don't. You don't remember sending me a dead rat backstage to my dressing room on opening night because you didn't get the part of Miss Hannigan? A dead rat? Oh, shades of baby Jane. I told my secretary a dozen times they sent you a dead rat. P. U. P. I told her a red hat. For gosh sakes, you know that a red hat is a symbol of good luck in the American musical theater. Ah! Oh, no, I never heard of that particular superstition. Well, I must admit, my attitude when I didn't get that part was... Yes, I was disappointed, but... But you know, if I couldn't get it, there is only one other human being left in this world I would want to play that role. And that is you, darling. <laughs> really? Is that the same feeling you had when the head of your network, Mr. R. Ray Randall, offered me this job first, and then when I turned it down, offered it to you? <laughs> what? That's right. They wanted to call it Ghostly's Place. Oh, the idea haunts me. I'd like to ask you one question, madam. And what is that? Why the hell were you so nice to me in that introduction? <laughs> because... Well, be because I bet my butler two bucks I could be nice to you for more than three minutes. <laughs> well, you lose. What? Oh, madam, is this your purse? Oh, my <laughs> purse? Don't show that on Oh, it's head. lovely. It picks up the green in your dress. Oh! And your face. Oh. Kind of a gangrene. Oh. What's she going for now? One for you <laughs> and one for me. Oh! Putting that in a safe place, are you? Yes, where it makes the most interest. <laughs> nice work, Miss Ghostly. Thank you, my darling. I do appreciate it, and we pulled it off. In this economy, every little bit helps. <laughs> well, I'll see you, honey. And by the way, everything I said about you was a lie. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks for the red hat. Oh, good. <laughs> Will you see your next gift? Guests have a tendency to babble, but they're boffo anyway. And they are brothers, which brings me to the point I'm trying to make. Please, won't you welcome with me the very funny, babbling boffo brothers. Yay! Hello there. I'm Biff. And I'm Barney. Remember us? We're Biff and Barney Boffo, the Babbling Boffo brothers. We're funny guys and we surmise will impress you all the while. Now here's some impersonations. Kirk Douglas. <laughs> well, that's Kirk Douglas, isn't it? Now listen here. I'm sick and tired of your family bubble brothers. I want you to take this piece of chalk and shove it. Gee, he scared us so much we did it. We were the only guys in town who could sit on a chair and leave a message at the same time. <laughs> Catherine Hepburn. The calla lilies are in bloom again. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart. I walked into a restaurant. A smiling waiter gave me some quiche. Well, a smile is just a smile. But a quiche is just a quiche. So I blew his brains out. Those real bogies don't eat quiche. He is looking at you, kid. Uh -oh. George Burns. I uh, 
took a girl out last night. We got romantic and she said, hurt me, hurt me. So I told her she had a big nose. Oh, I love George Burns. James Mason. This is James Mason. Having the babbling Buffalo brothers impersonate me is beneath my dignity. However, they reassure me their next impression is somewhat dignified. Charlie Callis. Dolliver Hardy. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Say, Rocky, watch me pull the rabbit out of my hat. Again? That trick never works. It's time for sure. Wow! No doubt about it. I need another hat. <laughs> well, that's the end of our show. But before we take off and go, if you're bothered by blues and the blahs, just take off your hat and go, Ooh! And you too can be a babbling Bafo brother. <laughs> Bye! Thank you! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was the babbling Bafos. Now, let's see what's next. Oh, yes. And now I'd like to bring out someone you all know and uh, maybe you even love. <laughs> My good friend, Kitty Show host, Mr. Honest. Oh! Mr. Honest, yay, Mr. Honest. Thank you, madam. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to use this time to make a brief request. The operative word being brief, I hope. <laughs> Madam is uncomfortable about my standing here talking to you. That's because television executives like to make sure that you're bombarded with sound and colors and movements and all sorts of things until you really don't know exactly what it is you're watching. Our television people devious. Mr. Honest, get on with it. Very well, madam. Someone sent me this poem entitled, Ode to Mr. Honest. If you're the one who sent it to me, I'd be very much interested in meeting you. Say, at the International House of Marital Aids on Wilshire Boulevard. I'll meet you tomorrow night at Peter Mr. Honest, yes. Well, that's the show for tonight. Join me next time when my guests will be the Atlanta Braves, the New York Yankees, the Cincinnati Reds, and also some guys I never dated. <laughs> Good night, all. I wonder if Mr. Honest has met his admirer yet. Pinky? Hmm? I wonder if Mr. Honest has met his admirer yet. Oh, I don't know. I hope so. You know, Mr. Honest hasn't dated many women. How come? Well, I think his honesty gets in the way. One day I met Mr. Honest in a bar, and every girl he met, he said, Hi, I'm Mr. Honest. I'm here to get lucky. Oh, <laughs> you know, Madam once told me his real name. Really? What is it? It's Eric Honest. You rang? <laughs> we were just talking about you and your uh, mystery admirer. I thought you might be interested in seeing her. Well, it's your life. If We'd you love to meet her. Dear, won't you come in? I was waiting for Bernadette. What are you watching? The roller skating evangelist on cable. It's a religion, but in small fleeting doses. Mm. You know, it's really strange. Bernie usually doesn't stay out past 9 o'clock. She told me that after 9, a girl feels just like Cinderella. She wants to get home because all men have turned into rats. <laughs> Serves, all right? I mean, well, it's true that since she's been dating Mr. Honest, you know, they've been staying out later and later. In fact, last night, he almost kissed Bernadette on the doorstep. Did he chicken out? No, he was just about to kiss her when Madam stuck her head out the window and yelled, Go for it, baby! <laughs> well, maybe they're really in love. Wouldn't that be terrific? Oh, I don't know. I guess so. You know something, Pinky? 
true love conquers all. I had this friend back home in Georgia. His name was Hezekiah, and he was just all messed up. He was married to a lawn statue. Can you believe that? Then he fell in love with this human girl, took the lawn statue to Reno, and got a divorce. He took the lawn statue to Reno to get a divorce? It was too late for an annulment. Hello, everybody. Oh, Bertie. You look just beautiful. You've changed so much. Oh, thank you, dear. This is the new Bernadette Van Gilder. The old Bernadette was a very plain woman who wore plain clothes and corrective lenses. But the new Bernie is a very exciting woman dressed in a gorgeous gown who still wears corrective lenses. <laughs> Where's Mr. Onyx? Well, he will be back tomorrow night. I'm going to cook him dinner here. Oh, gee, that sounds so romantic. Oh, yes, it <laughs> is. You know what? I have this, this funny little feeling in my stomach that, that just maybe he's going to give me something that I really want. He's going to give you a computer adding machine? <laughs> no, dear. <laughs> I was thinking more in terms of an engagement ring. Oh, Bernie, that would be terrific. Well, I guess I underestimated Mr. Ross. Oh, Pinkerton, never do that. Because I can tell you here and now that, that Eric Honest, a.k.a. Mr. Honest, is one hell of a man. Oh, Dad, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you and he were... Oh, Pinkerton, no, of course not. How dare you say such a thing? Well, well even when uh, Mr. Honest undresses me with his eyes, he says he still can't get my blouse off. <laughs> well, night-night. Sweet dream. Thank you, dear. Well, it's very reassuring that she hasn't changed too much. <laughs> You big palooka. The things you say. <laughs> oh, it's true, Bernadette. Oh. You do have lovely cheekbones. Oh. <laughs> Not perhaps in a class with, say, Catherine Hepburn. Oh. But they're very good nonetheless. <laughs> and I suppose the checkout girl at my Safeway store does have uh, somewhat thank better... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Soup? Please. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Oh. Bernadette? Yes. May I ask you something very, very important? Oh. <laughs> well, of course you may, Eric. Please, go ahead. <clears throat> Bernadette? Yes. How many more dates is it going to take before you let me have my way with you? What did you say? I have my needs, you know. It has nothing to do with my being male. The idea that females have weaker sex drives is a ludicrous myth invented by an oppressive puritanical society that's now dead. I cannot believe what you just said. I used to be married, you know. Used to be? Your husband's been dead for 20 years. <laughs> Mr. Honest... Well, I thought you two might like some after-dinner coffee. It's a very unhealthy thing, suppressing desires and hiding behind a dead man. Oh. Yeah. Celibacy is a shabby memorial to those departed. Oh. Bernadette, I'd love to find your G-spot. I guess this means you don't care for any coffee. To put it honestly, Bernadette... Oh, please do! I'd like to take you to the land of the goofy smile. Uh -huh. Where people breathe faster than they do here on Earth. Just about reached the end of my rope. We can use rope if you want to. I try to stay open to new experiences. I don't want to say anything that I am going to regret. All I want you to say is yes. Can you say yes, Bernadette? <laughs> no, I can't. Does that answer your question? Well, you're feeling chipper. Time for your steam, madam. Oh, yes. I hope it's hot enough for you. Hot enough? Last time I was in there, I was hotter than a half-loved fox in a forest fire. <laughs> Were you really now? Yes, really. 
How are our two little lovebirds doing downstairs now? Oh, the feathers are beginning to fly. Oh, my, my. If I hear any more squawking, I'll stop calling him Mr. Honest and start calling him Mr. Hormone. <laughs> well, I was only in there for a moment, but I got the distinct impression that there was a certain tension in the air. <laughs> tension, yes. It always precedes a <laughs> steamy night of hot <laughs> patio day. <laughs> Oh. Well, Bernie must have been taking karate. Sounds like she just gave him a black and blue belt. Well, I was merely acting on a completely natural impulse. I'd be willing to settle for just some heavy petting. Maybe some harmless groping. I'd expect you even more in the morning. I never heard such a racket. Oh, my gosh. Miss Van Gilder. Really, Bernie? If I'd known you were going to get kinky, I wouldn't have let you use the good china. What would Nancy Reagan have said? Madam Pinkerton, in case you're interested, I just want you to know that my relationship with Mr. Honest is over. Oh. He is just too damn honest for his own damn good. <laughs> Well, I'm going back to the sauna. Then I'm going to have a talk with that girl. This is not what I meant by the battle of the sexes. Well, I'll tell you, if madam is ever hard up for money, she can always rent Bernadette out as a one-woman SWAT team. No. Oh, that madam. Oh, no, I left her in the sauna all night. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> madam, I... <laughs> Let me at him, let me at him. Madam, forgive me, it was a stupid mistake. Why are you so angry? Honey, let me tell you something. If a man wants to use me to steam his damn vegetables, he has to be in the sauna with me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're not mad. Mm. Watch it, I'm a little drippy. You are. <laughs>